Now, for more than 10 years, the Nigerian army has battled insurgency in the northeast, and it appears the insurgents are feeling the heat. Uh, weeks after Nigeria took delivery of six uh, Super Tucano fighter jets to boost the onslaught on the insurgents. Now, more Boko Haram and Islamic State of West Africa province terrorists in Bornu State have now surrendered their arms and embraced amnesty. They were seen carrying placards, kicking against terrorism and appealing to Nigerians to forgive them. Now, but the subject of amnesty has been met with controversy as uh, many believe that granting pardons to the insurgents could compromise the country's security architecture. Well, joining me now is security consultant uh, Roy Okediabe to discuss this. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good morning, madam. It's always a pleasure. Now, if you look at the papers this morning, uh, we, one of them which I have here, that's the News Direct, you have on the front page over 1,000 Boko Haram ISWAP members surrender, uh, surrender in Bornu. And uh, this uh, story has been generating reactions, especially on social media. Now, this is not the first time we're having uh, this kind of surrendering from members of Boko Haram, which has always generated uh, reactions. But then the question is, uh, for a lot of Nigerians, should they be, shouldn't they, or should they be punished for waging war against the state uh, instead of uh, forgiving them or being pardoned? Uh, because uh, asking them to have, you know, be pardoned, a lot of people are coming out to say, you killed my family. You did this, you did that. But for you, what's your reaction? Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. You know, like you said, so many times um, over the years, there have been issues and situations where people come out to say we are reneging on mm. this um, counter-terrorism um, act. Now, let me state this. In the global perspective of terrorism, there are instances where there are internal upheavals and one commander may have an upper hand and dis dislocates other commanders. That is one of the reasons why you have some of them moving to some unpoliced areas and becoming bandits, cattle rustlers, because when they are moving, they move with their followers. Hmm. Now, that situation is existing already in Nigeria. They go to areas where there are mineral resources and illegal mining going on, take possession. They go to areas where there are fishing, farming, no policing there. They take possession, begin to collect taxes, begin to adopt people and collect monies. They were part of a clip that was chipped off the bog. Hmm. Now, if you want to look at the content of those that surrender themselves, you begin to understand that our judicial system is faulty. It's faulty to the context of abrogating penalties to certain um, defaults or criminal acts. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the criminal justice system. Right. Now, what is the role of the Navy when they apprehend pirates? They immediately hand them over to the police. Mm -hmm. Okay? What is the role of the military the army when they apprehend people that want to say, we are carrying cats, we are no more going to be terrorists and all that, we right. repent. Mm. You hand them over to the relevant agency without making any statement, mm. without even being seen in pictures or anything. Because by showing that you are in pictures with them, you are already demoralizing the troops in the forefront. Really? You are already demoralizing those that have been amputated, that are not getting proper medical care. You are already demoralizing displaced persons. Because you are the one that needs intelligence from those people, and you need it very raw. Well. So the first thing you should do is to seem apprehending these people, hand them over to relevant agency in no peaceful manner. When you have done that, this is the bad cop and the good cop scenario. So the relevant agency, the DSS, the police, or the correctional center, whatever the government abrogates to handle that, now begins to peddle softly with you, now begins to listen 
to know if you started terrorism when you were a small boy mm -hmm. and you were brought in on unannounced, if you were forced, if your families were kidnapped and you were asked to fight with the terrorist groups, all those things happen. Mm -hmm. If your village was captured and your village is still in captivity and you were forced to fight, there are so many scenarios. You begin to separate them. If you catch five um, armed robbers right now, you take them to court, you will find out that not all of them go for firing squad or death sentence. Why? Because there will be the ones that pull trigger to commit murder. And murder is one of the things that gets you to death sentence. Right. So these gangs of um, um, terrorist guys that are submitting themselves should be profiled. They should be profiled. They should be taken through a very good process. From what you are saying, their profiling is, is not to be done by the army. The it's army has no responsibility whatsoever. Let me tell you. The, the DSS and the criminal investigation system in the police mm. have to begin to separate issues. One of the things that they need to do first is to inject them with moles immediately. Once you inject them with moles immediately, once you begin to ask them for their phone numbers, leave the phones with them, and begin to use those phones to monitor discussions, monitor what is going on amongst them, who are they calling, who is calling them, then you begin to see those that are actually repenting. Then those ones we begin to face, because there is a world human rights rules and regulation, rules of engagement. So we begin to take those ones through the process. No separate camp. Mm. They should go into our criminal justice system. They should be in the, our correctional center. You know, you can, uh, you can build one. We have an investment in, 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 in security in this country. Yeah. In, a, in a week or two weeks, three weeks, we can just build up a correctional center, hand it over to the prisons, let the inmates be inmates, and let the DSS and the police penetrate these people and begin to assign um, innocence to so, so invariably, the process which the army is taking them through is faulty. That is what very, they're... very faulty. Now, does that have its implications on national security? Now, let me tell you, once you do what the army is doing now, if they are 100, let's say they are 100, there are thousands. Over a thousand. Let's say they are 100. Yeah. Kidnappers carry 100 students. They started to escape. Why? Because you can't put your eyes on 100 people in the forest. Okay? Now, you are having this much people with the military. How can you tell me that some of them cannot break away and get into the town? Now, we have private security companies in Nigeria. They employ security guards. And the NIN process is still on. They have extended and extended and extended deadline. So as a private security company, I may not be able to forcefully say, you must have a BVNU because oh God, I'm still registering. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they may penetrate and become guards in high-profile facilities that are high-risk facilities. They can penetrate and join the Okada riders, which has not been fully banned. Mm -hmm. They can penetrate and join the fruit sellers and all of that. Those guys will be sympathetic. Because uh, it's Aboki to Aboki, and you won't say it's from Niger, it's from Mali. We are all speaking the same language, we pray together. So they may use those um, antics to penetrate the ones on ground. So who we monitor that we have this number of people, we call roll calls, and they are being in check. And why they are being in check with you? Do you allow other agencies, mm. the immigration, to begin to assign which one is actually a Nigerian, which ones are from Mali? Which ones are from outside the country? Separate them and begin to look at roles that you played, knowingly or unknowingly. And begin to look at laws that are assigned to curb such roles. Were you a, a, a suicide bomber? Were you a bomb maker? Were you, you know, so, so, so many things to do. And in the course of that, when the peaceful negotiation, deliberation, interview is going on by the police, the DSS, not the army, army should go and engage in what they are supposed to do. Then they will plug moles into them hmm. to now begin to decipher if the story you are telling us is appropriate. Hmm. Then we can. Then they can deduce if truly they have repented. That's the not. truth. Because now, yeah. if you look at radicalism hmm. and ideology, I can say I'm not a Christian anymore. I want to be a Muslim. Tomorrow I can leave Islam and come back to Christianity and say I was deceived. So this radicalism and ideology that we see, they don't want Western education, they want to kill, they want to this. They can say they repent today. 
Tomorrow they can say, oh, somebody deceived them. It was this guy. And it goes back. How many of them we have seen that have been caught again? That we are among those that we spend taxpayers' money to say we are doing a de-radicalization process. Amongst this one, how many of them has... Do we have the data to be able to say you were caught before? You submitted yourself before. Right. Government put you through a de-radicalization process. Right. Well, how come did you join them again? We don't have that data. Because data paucity and data correlation is one of the bane of our insecurity challenges in Nigeria. Mm. We have not been able to say XYZ person are persons of high risk. So we want to know where they go to. So if I am a person of high risk in a Western climb, if I get from one airport to the other, my, my personality will flag. Mm -hmm. You know, the security agencies there, we know that Roy is in Abuja. What's he doing? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they may confront you personally if, it, if it's necessary and say, are we okay? Mm -hmm. You say, yes, we are okay. No, I'm not into that. You know, but we can trail you if we are not sure we want to confront you. Mm -hmm. But do we have that data sharing, data positive? Do we have that eyes on our database? Driver's license, NIN, phone numbers, national identity cards, hospital, HMO, and all of that. So if I go and do anything, I go to my bank anywhere. It doesn't need to be a crime happens. You now say, check where he has assessed ATM. And no, no, no. Once I assess the ATM, if I'm a person of high risk, it beeps with the DSS, mm. beeps with the police criminal system, the NSA. And everybody wants to know, why are you in Bayesa? Mm. That's the point. That's, that's, it's a lot that has to be um, put in place to really check because, like you have pointed, so much has to be done. We need to look at the, st the process of uh, giving this person's amnesty if we say we want to give them amnesty so that's we can deal with it uh, to the roots as such that we do not have the security implications avoiding those implications because there are also those who are drawing the lines between uh, the amnesty given to the Niger Delta militants and what we are seeing happen now. And uh, they are saying that so much, like you have pointed out, has to be done. But as it is, where does this leave us? Well, <laughs> we, are, we are back to issues of 2023. We are back to issues of political influence. We are back to issues of unprofessionalism by security agencies. So if we can be able to remove political influences, if we can be able to allow agencies to be professional, like the, the military should know where their line stops and hand over to the uh, other agencies to profile whatever cases is with them. It All gives right. them more time to focus and be able to protect the areas of interest. All right. Uh, because of want of time, we, we want to quickly touch on uh, this uh, issue. Uh, the security industry lost, uh, uh, as some would say, an Iroko fail mm. in the security industry in person or for Onai Homo. And uh, by way of paying our respect, because he was a friend to the house, uh, we, anytime we called on him, he was always uh, there for us. But talk to us how much uh, of a loss this means to the security uh, industry. In, in fact, uh, I can't begin to, to explain, you know, because uh, many years ago when I left the Nigerian army, I, I went to some places for interview and I heard that people are certified. People are certified. I said, on what? They say international security. And this is the man that brought this certification. And you know Nigerians with our peculiarity, we lashed at it. Everybody, everybody became a high profile certified personnel. Mm -hmm. If we go to the US, Canada, anywhere to go and talk security, all those conglomerates that come to Nigeria, when you present your certification and you can defend the certification on professional terms, they begin to wonder how we have imported this intelligence. It is Dr. Honor. Mm -hmm. And one thing I learned from Dr. Honor is he brings his wife everywhere he goes to in the security platforms. Mm -hmm. She's also a senior regional uh, head in security in Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, so the man has opened the doors. There are millions of people that have gone through the security school of management and security, mm. the association of um, industrial security. And if you look at his pro um, posits on TV, you will see how balanced it is. Absolutely. You know? And that balance has helped some of us to begin to remove ourselves from political influence and all other vices. Mm.
Dr. Ona has been a father. He has been a mentor mm. to so many of us. And I'm very happy that this time is given to him. Mm. And he will be sorely, sorely missed by the media, especially TVC, for which he was a friend to the house, and uh, Nigeria in general. Thank you so much, Security Consultant Royal Kilibe, uh, for your time. Thank you so much.